levantaré mi bandera Estando mi país o estando allá afuera Porque para mí, mira, no existen fronteras Yo levantaré mi bandera oh. Levantaré mi bandera Estando en mi país o estando allá afuera Porque para mí, mira, no existen fronteras No, no uh, oh, oh. Y es que hay mucho sentimiento Lo grito al viento De ser latino, nunca me arrepiento Lo digo desde la Suiza everyone and welcome to our 100th episode of the latin babbler show i am your host rafael aka the latin babbler i am here with my amazing co-host juan ayala and cosmo latina and man do we have a guest for you he has graced our tvs on many telenovelas such as amor a muerte la piloto the latest being malverde el santo patron and now he stars as Rodolfo lascano one of the biggest hits on netflix this year's quien mato a sara who killed Sarah, for those of you who need the English translation of that. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Alejandro Nunes. What's up? Hello there. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy about being here. Thank you for the interview and for the time. Hola a todos. Completely están? honored. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> so you were born in Venezuela. I'm, I'm interested to know what was your experience growing up there? Yeah, I was born in Caracas, uh, raised in Venezuela. Uh, 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 I was there till I was 17. I had a, uh, an amazing childhood, to be honest. Uh, uh, I grew up surrounded by love. I have a, an amazing family relationship. Uh, and uh, I'm very Venezuelan in, in, in so many ways, like, because I, I, I really grew up over there and that important time uh, of my life when you settle the person you are uh yeah it was in venezuela so uh, i had a great time i have a an amazing and strong connection with my my country uh i'm always involved I, i'm always focused i'm always uh, putting my attention in, in what's happening in venezuela and I always, uh, wherever I go, I said, I am a Venezuelan actor. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Y sabemos que actualmente radicas en México. De cierta forma, experimentas lo que muchos latinos estadounidenses experimentan al inmigrar aquí. Platícanos un poco de tu experiencia como inmigrante a Cuba y a México. Bueno, eh, yo creo que... Bueno, la vida del inmigrante obviamente no es fácil, eh, sobre todo los principios son duros. Eh, eh, también he vivido en los Estados Unidos y, y tengo claro lo que, bastante claro de hecho, lo que es el proceso de, de, de llegar a este país como de la nada. Y, y, y no sé, yo creo que también tiene que ver mucho con mi personalidad. Yo intento ver las cosas siempre desde el lado positivo y, y, y no clavarme tanto como en, en los momentos, sino un poco veo la, 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 la como que la, la foto un poco más grande, ¿no? Eh, de, de, de a dónde quiero llegar y, y, y no veo las cosas como, ay, sufrí muchísimo, fue muy duro, sino, sino bueno, es parte del proceso y vamos, seguimos, seguimos, seguimos. Mm. Este, sure. México es un país maravilloso que, del cual me siento parte, del cual siento que es parte de mi vida, me siento sumamente mexicano también en muchos sentidos, o sea, tengo 20 años ahí o, yendo a México y formando parte de México de mi vida, mi familia está ahí, mis amigos, la gente que quiero, donde es la ciudad donde, donde me pasan cosas y, y, y está increíble, eh, pero es verdad también que, que bueno, eh, viví, como bien dijiste, en Cuba en algún momento cuando me fui de Venezuela, eh, viví en Nueva York, viví en Los Ángeles, este... Y, y creo que mi carrera cada día me lleva más a estar eh, eh, viajando y a, y, a, y a no estar en un eh, lugar específico, ¿no? Ahorita estoy en Los Ángeles, hace nada, estaba en Europa, pasé que, un tiempo allá haciendo cosas de trabajo, de promoción, fui al Festival de Cine de Cannes, este, eh, y, y así, o sea, creo que cada vez, no solo mi carrera, no solo eh, el mundo de la actuación, sino el mundo en general cada vez es más global, cada vez eh, hay, eh, eh, se, se, se rompen eh, fronteras y, y, 
Y bueno, nada, no, eso es un poco de lo que, de lo que soy. When did you start realizing that you were going to go into acting? Like when, like growing up, when did you say, you know what, I really want to do this? That's a tricky question in my life because I, I always knew that I wanted to exp express myself uh, through, through acting, you know, through, through arts in general. Um, yeah. And I always felt this special connection with, with movies. <clears throat> And uh, I always thought I could easily be at the other side of the screen uh, performing. I always felt that. I, I don't know how, why or how, but I, I'm, I'm still sure about it. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so I decide 100% to be an actor and to give all my energy to be an actor the first day of shooting of my first movie uh, I did that movie without really without being an actor and the first day I said to myself okay this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life that, that was when I was 22 it's a movie I did in Mexico called Así del Precipicio uh, and you know that's the day I officially decide that I'm gonna to be an actor forever, but I always knew that I wanted to be at the other side of the screen. So, like, you are known big time for telenovelas. Like, everybody I speak to is like, oh, telenovela. He's the villain in all telenovelas. What is the audition process like for telenovelas? Is it just as dramatic as the telenovelas themselves? Like, when I look <laughs> at the screen, the Latinidad is, like, known for being over dramatic. So is the audition process the same? Like, do you have to be over dramatic when you're doing these lines for them? I don't know. It depends. Uh, I think is it can be dramatic in, in how that happened. Uh, I've been uh, in in castings and auditions for 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 soap operas that telenovelas that I don't know they they they, they use it they. They try for like two months, so you audition and you audition again, and you're stressed and you think you're gonna get it, but you don't know. And two months of that process is is very, very, very uh, dramatic and very <laughs> proportional to <laughs> create the whole drama yeah. world around uh, telenovela. But at the same time, I, I don't, I, I don't see it in that way anymore. I, 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 I don't, I don't think I see telenovela different than a movie, different than, a, I just, I just, I'm an actor telling stories and I try to do it with uh, as much um, truth as I can. Uh, and, and, and I think the moment you think The way you act in a telenovela is different. The way you act in blah, 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 or in, in another, I, I don't know. I think you always have to be the best actor you can. And and that comes from, yeah. from being honest, to be faithful to your character, be faithful to the story, and, and you don't judge. You just, you just, you, you try to be there as that yeah. person that you're playing at, and, and, yeah. and, and, and that's it. So, I don't, I don't, I don't see it different. Then, dado todo eso, entonces, okay. eh, ¿qué personaje que has interpretado hasta ahora ha sido el más desafiante y por qué? Pues mira, fíjate que, que, que creo que, que, que todos son desafiantes porque tu compromiso como actor tiene que ser hacerlos todos un desafío. Eh, y entonces cada personaje tiene que ser un reto cada personaje tiene que ser una búsqueda cada personaje tiene un proceso en el que tú intentas de conectar lo que racionalmente decidiste con respecto a ese personaje y, hacer, y conectarlo con una parte sensorial en, eh, emocional eh, dentro de tu ser entonces creo que en ese proceso todos tienen que ser un riesgo en el, 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 en el momento que haces un personaje donde no te estás retando a ti mismo estás dejando a un lado tu compromiso de contar una historia con verdad. 
and I'm curious. So as an actor myself, um, you know, I'm I've always I'm so fascinated seeing actors play um, antagonists and villains because to me those are the more interesting characters. Yeah. Because of course, as an actor, you can't judge your character. You are in that mindset. Like, you know, we don't judge ourselves going from day to day. So for um, seeing that you've played so many villains before, how do you get prepared for those types of roles? Like wh what is the mindset like going into it? Sort of finding your motivation. Yeah, I, I, I try to not uh, think uh, about my characters in that way. I don't, I, I don't, I don't put in my mind, this is the good, this is the bad, uh, this is this or that. Mm -hmm. I try to, because I think Villain, like bad people don't think they're bad. They, they think they're doing the right thing, and and that's exactly that's what I do with my characters. I don't I don't judge them, and I don't and I'm I don't put uh, anywhere in my head the fact that he's doing something wrong. Uh, so I I I I defend my my characters till the end trying to think that they're doing the right thing. So you don't like terrorize puppies or anything before doing these roles? <laughs> no, like, not at all, doing. not at all, to be honest. <laughs> he's, like, he's taking a puppy, he's like, No, 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 to, to be honest, because at the end, I, 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 I don't know. It, it's very easy to me because I, I, I understood from the beginning that, like, when they say caught, that's it. And boom, that's yeah. it. And, and and maybe you're tired or, or, or whatever, but I don't I don't I don't keep any of the energy of my characters. Mm, that is a talent. Oh, that's good. Because I know some actors are like that. They actually yeah, yeah, they there are some actors that I know they get done with their scenes and their roles and, and it's a mm -hmm. part of them even when they go back home. No, I don't I don't, I don't like it's, it's cool it's, that you're able to it's, it's it not my case, like yeah, to be honest. It's, and, and and I think maybe that's not very healthy, but I don't care. I don't mind. I don't judge. Everybody can do whatever they want. And, and, yeah. and it doesn't matter. You just have to. Yeah, it's okay. We have a master class on that. No. <laughs> I think we can use that in life. Yeah. <laughs> Leave that meeting and then <laughs> keep it pushing. <laughs> yeah. Keep it. Keep it in the workplace. Keep it in the workplace. So we we mentioned you're now on Netflix. You're playing the role of Rodolfo Lascano on Quemato a Sara. For those who haven't seen the series yet, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, of course. Character? This is a story about um, the Sara, <laughs> about uh, uh, the she died in an accident, and everybody thinks that my character, Rodolfo, it's the one that caused, caused the, that accident. And... Uh, but the brother of Sarah, which is my best friend, he goes to jail instead of me uh, to pay for the for Sarah's death. And uh, after 18 years, he goes. He came out of uh, uh, jail, and we discovered that it was not my fault. And uh, and then the mystery begins, and we uh, we start this. A nice and trip to discover who killed Sarah. Very and cool. for that, and for that particular role, what was your audition process like? Was it? Um, I, I know it was like before the pandemic, so um, I'm sure it was in person. But what was that? Was it offered to you because um, you have a reputation for working on these types of projects, or what was that whole? Yeah, the like? casting director Jessica Caldrello, she called me and she asked me to to do the audition for for Rodolfo. And I like it at first look, and uh, I went to the audition, and I don't know, it was very normal. I I I, okay. I got the role. Uh, I was traveling, I remember, and it took me like two or three days to answer them, and then and when we answered, they say like, oh, okay, but maybe he's not hundred percent now the character. So I was like, okay. So I had to wait for like two weeks, and then they they said, yeah, you are the guy. Qué bien, qué bien. Pero a diferencia de otros personajes donde llevas el control o por lo menos quieres el control, ¿cómo te preparaste para interpretar a Rodolfo Lascano, cuyo padre lo controla casi toda la vida? 
Mira, eh, yo, 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 yo creo que el proceso más difícil y más duro, con, o sea, y más duro me refiero a, 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 a de trabajo duro, o sea, el, el, la, la, la creación del carácter de Rodolfo, entender a Rodolfo desde adentro, encontrar esa, esa, esa forma de hablar, de caminar, de moverse, que tuviera sentido, que, que tuviera sentido con lo que yo quería, yo, yo visualicé y entendí de Rodolfo y cómo conectarlo internamente con una emoción a través de, de su corporalidad y de su forma de hablar y que no fuera solamente que caminaba así por, por caminar así, sino eh, que era lo que generaba en su background de vida el, el caminar y el hablar así y eso ahí donde encontré la manera de, de, de conectarme con, con el personaje y luego trabajar mucho, trabajar mucho, trabajar mucho en la improvisación, en la casa, en leer, en hacer, en intentar expresión corporal, en, en jugar mucho para, para hacer internizar, o sea, meter dentro de mí todo ese mundo que descubrí de Rodolfo para hacer lo mío y hacerlo real, ¿no? Mm. And with some um, telenovelas that run for, you know, 50, 100, sometimes way more episodes, they have such long runs compared to uh, dramas in American TV like Who Killed Sarah. Um, those seasons are much shorter. They're like eight to 10 uh, episodes. And I'm sure the production is very different from one to the other. Uh, since you've done both, do you have a preference? Do you like the longer storytelling or do you like sort of like... The I think they're different. Stories? But at the end of the day, as an actor, I I, 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 I just confront them in the same way. Uh, of course, it's different when you shoot three scenes a day instead of 25. That's a big difference. And I, I think when you answer that question and you say, oh, I prefer this, you're saying that the other thing is not that good. And, and, and I... I, I, I Mm. I'm able to do both with respect, with uh, as a professional, and 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 giving my heart also to it. Alguna vez comentaste que el título de la novela, telenovela de tu vida se llamaría El Luchador. Cuéntanos un poco más sobre eso. <laughs> ah, I'm a sovereign. <laughs> eh, yo soy un necio, un necio que que sigue luchando por sus sueños todos los días, que sus sueños son grandes y que, y que eso requiere de mucha energía, de, de, de mucho estrés, de mucho desgaste, de mucho seguirle intentando, a, 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 aunque se cierren puertas, aunque, aunque las cosas no siempre salgan como uno, como uno espera. Y, y yo creo que sí, por eso el luchador, ¿no? porque yo sigo luchando, sigo buscando, Siempre porque yo quiero más y mis sueños son enormes y, 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 y creo que los sueños se logran solo a base de lucha, constancia, disciplina, entrega. So, your latest project was picked up globally. That's the uh, Malverde, El Santo Patrón. Can you tell about that? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know you listen to the title and people jump right into you know, the term narcos, but that's not what the story is about. So give us a little details about what that is about. because it was, it had its season and now it's, it's like a, a giant sensation. So can you, can you reiterate a, as to what that project? Yeah, about, yeah, of course. This, 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 this is a story about Jesus Valverde. Uh, that was like, he was like a, uh, Mexican Robin Hood. Uh, He he was half Indian, the Indios Lloremes from Mexico, and and he grew up with them. So he learned how to cure people through plants, and he was, you know, helping people with money and also uh, curing people through plants. And and somehow he became a, a legend and and a saint. The saint from Sinaloa, uh, which is uh, the a place full of uh, narco traffic, and that's because of that he is connected to to narcos uh, like the saint. 
but he's he's not the the the, the saint yeah. of the narcos. He's the saint of Sinaloa. And so people think that when we talk about Malverde, we're talking about a drug dealer, and that's not real uh, because he he was uh, another person that we're gonna uh, show in the show, uh, and 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 it's a beautiful story. I think uh, it's a period story. It's during the 1910th. Is uh, is a is a, a very important time in Mexican uh, uh, history uh, because that's the the period of the Revolution uh, Mexicana, Mexican Revolution, and and the Porfiriato, la llegada de la luz. Uh, so uh, uh, that's a very important period in Mexico, and and this story happened during that time. Te cuento que mi papá es fanático. Oh, cool. Él, yo llamo y yo le digo, ay, que podemos hablar eh, más tarde porque estoy viendo mi novela. Así que. <ríe> That's <ríe> great. Te <ríe> hago <ríe> <dad, ríe> Claro que sí. Eh, volviendo un poquito al tema de Venezuela, yo tuve uh, el, la bendición de poder visitar así que hace 10 años. ¿Qué le dirías a quienes vemos a Venezuela desde afuera? de lo que está pasando actualmente ahí y cómo podemos ayudar al pueblo venezolano. Bueno, yo creo que es un tema sumamente delicado, ¿no? Y cuando los temas son delicados, eh, yo creo que lo importante siempre es documentarse lo más posible para tener un criterio eh, personal con respecto a lo que uno eh, entienda de, de una situación en específico. Eh, yo creo que es importante que la, que la, la gente tenga conciencia de Venezuela, eh, de, 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 de que bueno hay cosas en Venezuela que hay que entender, porque no es fácil, porque incluso como uno como venezolano no logra entenderlas, pero, pero bueno, creo que es importante que cada quien... Eh, intente tener su propio criterio eh, y, y, y bueno, ya te vemos en la LIF con tu documental lo vemos ahí en, el, en the New York version y después ahí en la LIF bueno, una claro. pregunta más seria así que sí. we're in the Yankees huh? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the city of New York. Hey, good answer. Hey, there you go. So Juan, Juan is all excited. No, I was wondering because look, you got a, you're sporting the Yankees hat. I'm a huge Yankees fan. No, no, no. Fan. I, 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 so. I, I, you know, I, I used to live in New York. Of course, I went to the stadium, but I also used to live here in Los Angeles, where I am right now, and I, I, I. I used to go to the stadium too, and 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 I love Dodgers. I love Yankees. I love the baseball. Of course, I'm Venezuelan. We 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 grow up with the baseball, uh, yeah. and with the amazing baseball players. And um, but I'm not. I guess I'm fan of uh, of the teams where Venezuelan is playing. Okay. Yeah. There you go. No, that make, look, that makes sense. I'm I'm like that too in a way. Like I'm a diehard Yankees fan, but I've lived in Miami, I've lived in Virginia, I've lived in, you know, I, li I live now in LA, and I find myself supporting the teams. Yes, of course, of course, you know, and with the and with the Latin time, players so like, and and and, you know, I I was living in Miami when uh, that World were were series uh, with. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, oh, he hit a home run so against uh, yeah, uh, so Roger good. Clemens, and uh, no, yeah, Roger Clemens, and and uh, yeah, yes, right of course, you connect with the city you are at, and 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 it's hard that I I'm not a big 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 fan of anything. I think maybe I'm fan of the Real Madrid, uh, yeah. but but. At the end, I, I, I'm not a big fan of anything. I, I can, I can be flexible. Yeah. 
Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, you know what? He looks good in the hat, by the way, because I can't. Thank you. We'll get him a tasty royal then, <laughs> San Perez. Connection too. <laughs> oh. By the way, yeah, you were talking about that series with, you know, uh, with the Marlins. I was torn because all of my family were all Marlins fans. I was a Yankee fan. I was going for the Marlins because it was kind of like a dream season. So I yeah, was yeah, that series. series was crazy, man. Just looking at crazy, like, crazy, <laughs> crazy. It was crazy. Oh, that, that was very special one. It was so good. Yeah, it was. It was. It was like a Cinderella team. Yeah, it was yes, really yes. amazing to watch. All right, so let's have some fun. I'm going to ask you okay. five challenge questions. Two of them are going to be pretty fast, or three of them are going to be pretty fast. The other ones you can turn around and, and give out. All right, so that way people get to know you. Do you like hot coffee or iced coffee? Both. Yeah, but if you have no, 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 but, uh, to be uh, but okay. Now. Come on. Hot coffee. <laughs> Latino coffee. <laughs> hot coffee. All right. <laughs> Hey, he's so he's diplomatic. Not just you're Latino, doesn't mean, yeah, right? He's all diplomatic. No, we're gonna go with both. I like them both equally, 50 yeah. 50. So yeah, for me, it depends yeah. on the day. I'm not drinking hot coffee I don't in drink New York coffee when it's 90 day, degrees out. It's an iced. But I like coffee. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, so are you yeah. like are you even? <laughs> yes, I am, I am, I am. Like, Trust me, I am. Just your car. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> So, favorite Latino dish? Oh my gosh, that, that's a hard one. Oh, I'm a big, I'm an eater, yeah, man. That's a hard I'm one. Eater, you have to like you have it. no idea. The worst part is, oh is you've God. lived in all the places where they have distinct dishes. So, from Miami Cuba to LA to New oh York, like you've lived in all of the different places. No, 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 Cuba. no. That's, a, that's, that's, that's so such you had a to hard choose one, question. Though. Uh, I'm gonna say the arepa, arepas. There yes. Are yeah, arepas I love. Oh, it's a good choice, so though. Good. Arepas I love. Yeah. Good yeah. choice. Good choice. All right. If somebody, if somebody was trying to reach out to you, would you be talking to them or would you be? I like texting talking. Them? I can text. People. Everybody likes to text talking. now. So many. So much people doesn't like to talk. I'm the one who's gonna call you, and you're gonna be like, oh, "Who wants to talk?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. All right, so if you had one vacation, like the, you only had one vacation that was given to you, you're not going to have any more after this, but you have one vacation that they've given to you. What or what? So you're talking you about the last vacation of my life? The last vacation of your life. Where are you? Wow. Going? Wow. I I, I have easy, to right? say I would go I to Caracas. Ask you your underwear color, to, like <laughs> to my yeah, to to my place Caracas. to see my friends. To we're talking about my last vacation ever, my last moment. So yes, of course I'm gonna <laughs> okay. I, I'm gonna go back to 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 my 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 house, my 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 streets, my people, my food. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you made it, you're Latin, you made it dramatic. See? You say like. The last of the Lazarus, of course. <laughs> I need, I need, I need, I need. I made I need it family. to Marilla. like it's I need good. family for the last. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, last question: Name something that your fans don't already know about. Wow. Um, there are a few they know. Yeah, they, they some some of my fans. I, I assume they know. That I'm crazy about food. That I love food. That I like love traveling and and get to know places through food. And 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 uh, I'm an eater, and and I'm passionate about the the culinary world. Um, what else people don't know about me? Uh, I, I love to cook. I love the to cook. One thing yeah, that they I, am, don't. Uh, I love, to, love cook. to cook. Uh, and okay. I and I think. If I cook for you, it's, it, you have to appreciate that because it, I, 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 as I see life, cooking for someone else is a is a way of love. Is this, yeah, and it, and it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a way I, I yeah, give yeah. love to my food. That's yeah, yeah. Me too. Andres, Andres. Yeah, my dad that's was a, a chef. That's a very good way of it. Yeah, yeah. Juan, Juan knows. 
His, his, you were saying Juan, your, your yeah, dad was my a dad chef, was right? a chef for like 20 years of, since I was a kid for about 20, 25 years. And that's definitely like, you know, cause there's just, there's something like intimate and special about someone like yeah. putting in the work to cook something for you, like with love and yeah, and not everybody's allowed to, which is like, you know, uh, you know, I like not everybody has <laughs> the same, um, it's not that open to share love. That's why people is like, ah, I'm not good cooking. And they don't even try. Yeah. The same with the massage, massages. It's like I'm not doing, do, I'm not good doing massage, but that it, it's it's personality, you know. You have to give your energy to something that is yeah. not probably for you, for someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know that you just like fired her up. So, like, do you give <laughs> good massages? Because Cosmo over there. Oh, is see, I don't play. And I, I don't play with people. No, I don't she play with people who know. talk about they can give good massages, and then they're like, eh, eh, eh. I'm like, look, yeah, I get yeah, no muscular. Yeah, yeah. I nah. I'm totally well, agree with you. Yeah. With all the oil, yeah. I got the, like, that fifteen <laughs> seconds of like, oh, that's it. What? That's not. Hey, so then, nah, no, que no pasa nada con eso. No, 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 no. Me lo doy bien duro y yo lo doy bien duro también. So, so for people interested in knowing, Alejandro, no, I, I, good yeah, I like, I like to. I, I'm a giver. I'm a giver. Yeah, I'm a giver. Like, yeah, I, 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 give. I like to give to, to, to people. So yeah. All right, so we're gonna raffle it off. So uh yeah, pero uno ya está en los ángeles. Hello. <laughs> what, what what fundraiser got? massage. The the winner oh, the winner of the fundraiser gets a gets a thirty minute massage, <laughs> and um, you know with food he's gonna cook and give him massage. Well, already in LA. Hello, hello. Really hello. cool stuff. Thank you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Alejandro, if somebody wanted to reach out and you follow to Instagram, you, where would they go? And they follow me as uh, Alenones. At Alenones. And, and I try to be very close to people uh, through social media. I answer, I read, I, I, I'm there. And I, and I think it's a beautiful way to be near to the people that give you so much energy and that's beautiful now you have a ton of followers though are you really yeah like yeah yeah I, I manage it myself and um, um, I, yeah, yeah I give energy to everybody wow yeah. okay that's very cool very cool because there's a lot of there's a lot of you know artists actors and so forth who you know have oh, I do it myself that, that take care of the social media for them so Oh, very cool. Very admirable. Yeah, it does. Because I know that must take some time. So mm -hmm. you're going to get a personal touch, ladies and gentlemen, if you go visit his Instagram. <laughs> just make sure, you know. If he doesn't respond right away, don't blame the Latin Babbler show. We didn't have anything to do with it. He's the one giving you the information on the screen here. <laughs> so, um, but Alejandro, thank you so uh, thank much you. for joining thank us you here. Thank you guys for having show. me. It was, yeah, it was a great time. I had so much fun, and, and it was really my pleasure to meet you guys. Awesome. Likewise. Of All right. course. And thank you the to the audience. audience. Uh, I sent kisses right and love Don't to everybody. To thank you so much for, for your time and for right? listening. <laughs> a todo el mundo. Follow us at the Latin Babble Show on all media platforms. Well, you know, visit the website, latinbabbler.com, and our new Todo Wafi, where you're going to see a lot of stuff taking place. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the button right below by clicking the subscription button and listen to our podcast on all platforms as well. From the Latin Babbler, from Cosmo Latino, from Juan Ayala, from Alejandro Nunes, we are out. Desde Nicaragua hasta Costa Rica, con esta canción todo el mundo se identifica. Llamen a los chilenos y a los cubanos, llamen a Puerto Rico y a los mexicanos, que ya se armó la rumba. Desde Panamá hasta Ecuador, vámonos a Perú y luego hasta El Salvador. Que se escuche Brasil y Argentina. Yo quiero un grito de mi gente latina y levantaré mi bandera. Estando en mi país o estando allá afuera, porque para mí mira, no existen fronteras. Yo levantaré mi bandera.